From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. Once again, we're going to be zeroing in on some international news, and this first one truly moves my heart, and I think a burden on your heart. Obama sees no Mideast peace deal during his term. I'm so sorry about that. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could see peace in the Middle East? And then going on, Russia, Cuba agree on security cooperation. Now, we're going to be talking about the last time Russia tried to do this and what happened. Again, is this the end oh, of Mideast Christianity? Oh, my, I never dreamed that I would see anything like that in my lifetime. But I guess Christianity is the most hated religion over there at this point. Now, you know, we get letters, my, oh, my, so many letters every single day in our international headquarters here. And so many of them say, thank you, Dr. Van Impey, thank you, Jack Van Impey, for revealing the truth and for telling the truth and giving us the scriptures backing up all the things that you say. Well, other preachers sometimes don't get that kind of a compliment, Jack, but I'm glad you do. I heard about a preacher who went into this store and he said, do you give discounts here to ministers? He said, you know, I'm a poor preacher. And the clerk said, yeah, I heard you last Sunday. <laughs> and he was probably one of these preachers who has all of this latte and coffee and, and rock bands and choreographed people dancing on the stage. And someone said the problem with most pastors today is they're entertaining the goats rather than feeding the sheep. Amen. Let's get into the book. Amen is right. I never heard that before, Jack. I really like that, don't you? Well, we need to, need to get into the book, don't we? The Word of God. And I want to point to an article from our magazine that expresses a joyful, joyful event. Take a look, please. Welcome to the Rapture Generation. Oh, we need to be prepared, friends. Now, twin mission testing the effects of a year in orbit and how space affects genetic doubles. Now, of course, they are talking about astronaut Scott Kelly and went up uh, to the space station uh, a while back and they want to see how they compare with both of them having gone out into space. And they can do that now. Jack, I'm going to back up here. Welcome to the rapture generation. I'm asking him if he will quickly give us kind of an outline of the events leading up to the rapture. Will you please? I believe we are the generation that will not die because we're going to be caught up in the rapture. Now, what is that? It's 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 to 18. The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, we're still here in the earth, shall be caught up together with them, with the dead, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He says, comfort one another with these words. Why comfort? because that is a pre-tribulational rapture. We are gone before the judgments, 21 of them, in Revelation 6 to 18. How do you know that? Listen to what he says in the third chapter, verse 10. I will keep you believers out of, ek, the Greek word, the hour of temptation and testing and 21 judgments that will come upon the earth. We're going to be gone, praise the Lord. Now, as soon as we get there, the judgment seat of Christ begins. It's called the Bema Seat, and it's 2 Corinthians 5.10. We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that every one of us may receive the things done in his body. According to that, he hath done whether it be good or bad. We're going to have to meet the Lord. Some of you say, oh, I can hardly wait to meet Jesus. Wait a minute. You're going to go through an investigated judgment of what you did in this life. Did you win souls? Did you support God's work? good and bad. And there are five crowns that are to be distributed to lay at Jesus' feet in Revelation 4, verses 10 and 11. Wouldn't it be 
horrible to stand there and not get a second crown. And that's why 1 John 2, 28 says, Little children abide in Christ, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed, ashamed before him at his coming. After those seven years, we return with Christ to earth. He sets up his kingdom. He comes as the king of the kings and lord of the lords in Revelation 19, verse 16. And he rules and reigns for 1,000 years, Revelation 20, verse 4. Then he is recommissioned, 1 Corinthians 15, 24 to 28. And then his rule goes on forever and forever on earth. And we're going to be here on earth with him. And that's Revelation 11, 15. The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and his Christ. And he shall reign, listen, forever and forever. Oh, Jack, that sounds so wonderful. Can you imagine this earth having Jesus reigning over it? Oh, my, I can't even imagine how wonderful that will be. Well, there are so many signs pointing to the coming of the Lord, hundreds, actually. So I'm going to ask Jack if he'll give us some from the Gospels. Would you do that, Jack? Oh, this is something. In Matthew 24, 3, the disciples came to Jesus and said, Tell us, when shall these things be that you're going to come? And what shall be the sign of your coming? For a long time I battled with that as a new convert, but now I found it. And it's exciting. It's verse 27. As the lightning comes out of the east and shines unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be a blaze of lightning from coast to coast. Next time there's a blitzkrieg out there, watch. It may be Jesus' return. But there's more to the sign. When he comes with his crowd, he, says, he lands on the Mount of Olives and it splits from east to west, identical to the great thing that happened in the heavenlies. And this is the return of Christ to set up his kingdom, not on the mountain, but there in Jerusalem. And ladies and gentlemen, we have come with him at that time and we'll never be back in the real heaven because now he dwells on earth and the prayer has been answered. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The prayer that we've prayed for 2,000 years and it's going to be eternal life here on terra firma where we've been in the past. You talk about traveling in those days, you're going to see it all. Well, you know, Jack, I think we're seeing it all right now, don't you, friends? So many signs pointing to the return of the Lord. But give us some of those signs pointing to the sign, Jack, the one you're talking about. Well, first of all, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 36, but of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels of heaven. And we've got Christians, they say, oh, it could be another thousand years. You're a backslider. You don't know what you're talking about. Because Jesus went on to say, preceding that, in verse 33, you'll know when it's near, even at the door, that hour has arrived. All 500 signs are here that say that he's coming back to the earth. And then when we're here with him, there'll be another 500, 1,000 of them. First, he said there'll be false Christ and false prophets. Matthew 24, verses 5, 11, and 24. There should be wars and rumors of wars. Nations shall rise and station kingdom against kingdom. And right now we understand that better than ever because in the Mideast they're fighting among the kingdoms, Shiites, Sunnis, and the rest. He go, continued, there will be pestilences galore. We've picked up 25 new diseases from animals and insects just in the last 25 years, one a year. And he said, verse 9, you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. The slaughter that's going on now among the Christians, 45 million just in the last 100 years, and it's increasing as they're beheading everyone they can get a hold of in the Middle East, Muslims. And the Jews, it's coming soon. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It's the time of Jacob's trouble, and Jacob is the Jew. Second Kings 17, 34. Judgment is coming to both, not from God, from the people that hate Jews and hate Christians. What an anti-Semitic, anti-Christian world. And we're being told that both of these groups are the most hated in religion today. Then he said in verse 21, but then shall be great tribulation such as never was since the beginning of the world to this time, no nor ever be again. And that's the 21 judgments of Revelation chapters 6 through 18. And then he talks about something special there. 
the fig tree blossoming. And that's verse 32. Who's the fig tree? Israel. How do you know that? Joel 1, 7 and Hosea 9, 10. I saw your fathers as the first ripened in my fig tree. And the fathers were Israeli people. And then we find in verse 37, the greatest time of terrorism this world has ever known. It's here. Listen to what Jesus said in that verse. He said, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. How was it in Noah's day? Genesis 6, 11, the whole world filled with violence and corruption. Oh, 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 Jack. Violence and corruption, do you ever see such an impact of it in the world? It's going on everywhere, isn't it? The violence. But I am going to back up to something, the number one sign that he gave a moment ago. It has to do with apostasy, with antichrists out there, friends. My, oh, my, they're making fun of who Jesus really is. Let's elaborate on this, if you will, please. Take a look at this gentleman, Noah Hutchings. Now, he has a wonderful ministry. It is a radio ministry, and he's written this about what is happening in that area. We are encouraged in that many Christians are being awakened to the apostate condition of what appears to be the majority of our nation's churches. Very well said. The majority of our nation's churches. Due to Dr. Jack Van Ippie using our book, The Dark Side of the Purpose Driven Church, and the related track, Is Your Church Going Purpose Driven? How Can You Tell? Approximately one million tracks have been requested. Thank the Lord for that. And thank the Lord for this article and for your work, Dr. Hutchings. Again, apostates, antichrists, super deceivers, their hour has arrived. And I want to go on and ask Jack about that. Has the hour arrived when we really will see more and more antichrists where people are saying, well, he's our Messiah, we're going to follow him? Or apostasy where they fall away. Have you ever come across somebody, friends, and you say, are you a Christian? Well, I used to be. That's apostasy. They're falling away from what they used to claim to be. Jack, that breaks my heart. Oh, Rick, so that really moves my heart. I just announced it, and one million people in our audience ordered that pamphlet. Thank God that we're reaching the world. That's one of the great signs before I get what Rex L just asked me. That is Matthew 24, verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached to all the world, and then shall the end come. The gospel of what? The kingdom. We preach the gospel of grace. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, now shall be saved. The gospel of the kingdom is, the king is coming. The king is coming. Revelation 19, 11. And he says, when you hear the sign that the whole world is hearing the gospel of grace, that's pointing to the fact that the king will soon be here. Would you imagine that Rexel and I are now the largest in the world with 552 stations in America covering Canada and every satellite to the entire world? It's here. That's the sign when the whole world hears. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done through us. But now here's the other part of the sign. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, let no man deceive you. That day Christ's return shall not come until there come a great apostasia, that's the Greek, a falling away from the Christian faith. And when you've got guys like, and I said it before and I'm going to say it again, uh, Wycliffe, Sills, and Frontiers saying, we just made a new version for the Muslim world. We took out Jesus 91 times. And a guy just sent me the letter they're sending out saying, well, I would know Van Nippy's talking about this, but we do believe in the tree. No you don't. I read your article carefully. If you believed in the Trinity, you would not have done away with Jesus Christ, who is the second member of the Trinity. 91 times you took him out of the new version. That's apostasy. That's turning against Christ. And then you've also denied the Holy Spirit. It's the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Why? Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit, 2 Peter 1.20. Jesus says when he has come, the Spirit. He'll guide you into all truth. John 16, 12, it's there. So you've denied Christ. You've denied the Holy Spirit. You don't have a trinity left. All you have is the Father. And you are in trouble with God because Revelation 
tells us in that 22nd chapter, verse 18, if any man adds to this book, I'll add to him the plagues written in this book. And if any man takes away from the book of this prophecy, I'll take away his name out of the book of life. You're lost. You've done away with the Trinity. You've done away with Jesus. You've disobeyed the Holy Spirit. And we've got 300 guys now who have signed the Yale Covenant. 300 apostatized from Christianity. First thing they had to do was shake the hands of the leaders of Islam at the Yale Convention and said, we're sorry for the Crusades. Come on. And then they said, we want you to know that the name of our God is also Allah. No, it is not. You've broken the first commandment. You guys are Christian preachers. Forgive it. God, forgive them. First commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Plain enough, it's our God, Yahweh, and the second member of the Trinity, who's God in the flesh, Romans 9, 5. His name is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit of God is the third member of the Trinity. Let's get back to basics in the Bible. Now, I want to say one more thing. Deuteronomy 11, 26 and 27. God says, I send upon you a blessing and a curse, a blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, and a curse if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But you've gone after other gods, Allah, Buddha, Confucius. That's not how you get salvation, and I don't care what price I have to pay. I will preach God's word till my last day. You're going to get it, and I will not quit going after you. And I've told God when anyone moves out, I'm going to come after him, and I'm coming after you guys in replacement theology very soon. You two have blessed me by Jesus in the word of God. Oh, Jack, the word of God. That's what really matters. People can say what they want to say, but that's just man talking. But when you give the Word of God, that's God's talk, uh, speaking to us and what He wants us to believe. I'm going to back up on something here. A statement that I gave right up front, and it has to do with President Obama's prediction about the Middle East. Take a look, please. Obama sees no Mideast peace deal during his term. Saudi's war on Iran deal could spur nuclear race in the Middle East. Nuclear Iran is like 40... North Korea's and Israel told, prepare for Armageddon and forget U.S. help. Again, Pope Francis warns of World War III. And here's something, the Russia-China axis is here. Now, I have referred to the fact that Russia and China are pals. They're going together in developing some of the nuclear weapons. Jack, that's very important in the light of prophecy, isn't it? Rex Teller, we've never known war like we're seeing it before our very eyes now. The Mideast is a tinderbox. It's going to get worse because my Bible says there should be wars and rumors of wars already quoted earlier in Matthew 24, verses 6 and 7. But the big thing is what Pope Francis was calling about Armageddon. Oh, man, that's Revelation 16, 16. It's described in Revelation uh, chapter 9, verses 14 to 18. Loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind. And by these three was the third part of men slain, fire, smoke, and brimstone. Atomic warfare, Psalm 97, 3, Isaiah 66, 15, Ezekiel 20, 47, Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30. Revelation 8, 7, the third part of the trees was burned. All green grass was burned. Why? Because China, after Russia begins to falter, aligned with the Arab nations in Daniel 11, 40, and Joel chapter 2, verses 3 and 30, and then Psalm 83, verses 4 to 7. It's all there, ladies and gentlemen. Russia then calls for help from its buddy, China, the kings of the east, Revelation 16, 12. And it's mainly when they're there that the bloody conflict takes place there at the Euphrates River, right now where ISIS is. What a time to be alive. Surely, there's not going to be peace, especially while this president is monkeying around and getting away with what the mess he's creating in Iran. They're going to get ready when they got the bomb. We're going to be hit. Obama 
you'll regret the decisions you've made. Well, you know, Jack, I want to shift gears here for just a moment because Putin is shifting gears. He's going to South America. Take a look, please, at this next headline. Putin to put Russian bases in Latin America, so close to our homeland. And then Russia, Cuba agree on security cooperation. Now, Jack, the last time that happened, Kennedy stopped it. President Kennedy, what's going to happen now? As Obama flopped with President Putin, he's going to flop in Iran. We're in real trouble. What did he do with Putin? He said, hey, I want to do something to favor Putin. Told the Medvedev when he was taking Putin's place, and then he got in. And they had the non-proliferation treaty. I mentioned this two weeks ago. And Obama destroyed many of our nuclear weapons. Putin didn't. And then our president said to Poland and Czech Republic, we're going to set up missiles to defend the European Union. It hasn't been done. But this Putin has now been to Bolivia and to Cuba to put in missiles aimed at our country. Atomic war is coming. Let's go on, Rexella. Yes, I'm going to go on here quickly about the Christians in the Middle East, the most hated religion there. Take a look at the CN for Mideast Christianity. Christians on verge of extinction in Iraq. No more Christians in Mideast. What? Within two years, top Saudi cleric burn all the churches, and they're doing it. Assyrian Christians told, if you want to come back, convert to Islam or die. And Prince Charles, of course, that's the Prince of Wales. Christians persecuted by Islamists, says Prince Charles. Oh, friends, look at this. Terrorists sing of slaughtering Jews and Christians now in the Middle East for Christians 2014. I know you will agree, has been a catastrophe. Jack, my heart is so moved for all of them. And they're singing, oh, we kill all the Jews and Christians, you bunch of barbarian murderers doing it in the name of religion. And your Quran 273 times says kill, 164 times holy jihad, wars like you're creating. And also 109 times you kill Christians because they love Jesus. Now, let me tell you this. Here is what I've been accumulating, 200 places where you have murdered Christians in the name of Jesus. And you say, oh, we love Jesus. Well, if you love Jesus, why are you murdering everyone who loves Jesus within the Christian realm and all these Jews? You're not going to get away with it. My Bible says you're going to pay the price, but it's going to get worse, Christian. Listen to me. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, Jews and Christians. Matthew 24, 9, Jesus speaking. In Revelation 6, 9, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Revelation 20, verse 4, I saw the souls of them that were beheaded. Muslim way of doing it for the witness of Jesus and the word of God. Now, everyone says, oh, it's just ISIS. They're the mean ones. The rest of the Islamic world isn't that way. Wrong! 1990, there were only three Muslim terrorist groups. Now, 25 years later, there are 49. Kill and be killed in the name of religion. God help America and the world. Oh, my Jack. So revealing, isn't it, friends? I just want to say to you, we may not know everything that the future holds but how good it is to be able to trust in the one who holds the future. Are you trusting in the Lord Jesus as your Savior, the only Savior of the world, the Savior that came to die for you? Will you open your heart to him and say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my Savior. Be prepared for the future. Pray with Jack as he prays this wonderful prayer. Jack. We just had Easter and we saw that cross and that's the only way to be saved. Oh, the suffering and the agony. Jesus paid as he died for your sin. And all you have to do is receive him. You're saved for all eternity. Lord Jesus, thank you for Calvary, for the cross, for the bloodshed, for the agony, for every pain you suffered to cleanse me of every sin. I lay them all on you, Jesus. And right now, I'm asking you to become my Savior. Come into my heart, Jesus save me now. I pray this in your glorious holy name. Amen. 
Amen. Did you pray that prayer? You just became a child of God, and he's going to walk with you now in the future. Write to me. I'll send you this little book called Absolutely Free for Steps in a New Direction. I want to hear from you. A child of God. Whoa! Now, remember up front on our program, Jack referred to the rapture. Well, that's the title of our wonderful offer of the week, The Rapture Generation. Please take a look at the promo. Could 2015 include the return of Christ? Date setting is never accurate. Fulfilled prophecy is. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. Global devastation is on the horizon. But good news, soon millions will be evacuated, missing the 21 judgments taking place on Earth as we sweep through 187 trillion, billions of miles in the twinkling of an eye. Oh, what a ride as we whiz by Mars and numerous planets to reach God's throne in the third heaven. This event is about to happen. Jesus said when you see all the signs, you will know this momentous event is near, even at the door. To date, all 500 signs have been fulfilled, including the final two major signs only 21st century inhabitants have witnessed after 2,030 years. We are the generation that could experience the greatest flight ever, the rapture. Don't be left behind. Prepare to meet God. Order the Rapture Generation today. Oh, yes, prepare to meet the Lord, please, and know all about what's happening in the world according to the rapture and how it applies to your life. There's the 800 number, and there's the address, so please make the call right away. We will get this in the mail as soon as we hear from you. You know, we talk about Armageddon in here and so many other things that are on the horizon right now. You want to know how it applies to the rapture, it's all explained in this wonderful, wonderful video. Make the call. We want to hear from you. And now, whoa, here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive this wonderful, wonderful offer of the week. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Eller, my friend, to order The Rapture Generation on DVD or VHS. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Vanapy Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck, and I want to encourage you. There's the 800 number, and there's the address. You want to connect the dots of what's going on in the world. If you get this, you'll understand it even better applied to your life. So make the order right away. You know how close we need to be with the Lord and walk with the Lord. I've used this thought before, but I want to use it again. If you're not as close to God as you used to be, guess who moved? How very, very true. I trust that you'll be walking with him. We we'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. So very much. Bye-bye.